diario que también sacan el pescado que estamos andamos pagando nosotros no o sea están echando a perder la, la pesca de la reneta por el mismo punto de que donde arrastran toda la, la pesca nosotros no, no podemos pillarla por lo mismo Los pescadores artesanales son considerados actualmente el último cazador de la sociedad. La situación actual de la pesca en Chile yo la categorizo como catastrófica. Prácticamente todas las pesquerías importantes en el mundo se han ido agotando y lo que se logra extraer del océano es cada vez menor. Yo mismo, yo le digo a mi nieto, a mi nieta, yo le digo que el futuro no va a tener la pesca. La pesca ya para él está muy bien. Muchas familias que, que dependen de la pesca, de la pesca y sin pesca no, no comerían. ¡Vamos, vamos, vamos! ¡Carguemos con el Mauro! Usted tiene la flota nacional y también hay una flota internacional depredando sobre ellos en forma continua. No hay, no hay población que pueda aguantar eso. Porque esto se ve, se ve feo, que el día de mañana ya no va a haber alimentación. Regulan la pesca de nuestra caleta y no regulan la pesca de la, de la gran industria pesquera que es la que ha destruido los recursos del mar de estos últimos años. El tema acá es preservación, no pescar más, sino que pescar mejor. No pescar para enriquecerse, sino que pescar para vivir. We live in a very anthropocentric culture. That means that we respect and revere things which are created by human beings. Uh, and we give very little thought to the natural beauties uh, of our world. I think if we can't protect a place that is so beautiful, so unique, which has such an incredible history when it comes to, you know, the study of evolution. If we can't protect that place, how can we protect anywhere else? Uh, this is, in a way, is a very sacred place. It's very hard to have respect for any other ecosystem if we can't respect the one ecosystem which is most renowned on this planet uh, for being so unique. Así como hay plástico en el océano, también hay rastros de plástico en nuestra sangre. Si yo miro aquí todo lo que estoy mirando, todo tiene plástico, tu ropa, tu celular, está todo, todo, todo tiene plástico. Plástico, el doble filo, informe especial. 30 years ago, the ocean was a lawless place. With no one to protect it, the sea was being plundered, threatening the very balance of life. And to save the planet, it would take an outlaw. Yeah, this is Paul Watson. Nice to meet you. Confessions of an eco-terrorist. The epic tale of the world's most wanted environmental heroes. Captain Paul Watson and his vigilante organization, the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society. Introduce you to Captain Paul Watson. I've got a statement here from our clients, so we're going to play that on the loudspeaker. 
legendary filmmaker Peter Brown takes us on a 30-year voyage as they confront the world's worst environmental bad guys. They've been attacked. <laughs> shot at. They just fired at us. It's a put out a May Day that we're under attack by the Norwegian Navy. Rammed. <laughs> and assaulted. Go home, you fucking seal hugging sons of bitches! You fuck off, you fucking fuck! Now he's heading out to the Faroe Islands, where one of the most barbaric whale kills of all anywhere in the world takes place every year. It's an old tradition. It's a tradition. A tradition, tradition. As well, you know, for a long time, cannibalism was uh, traditional. The true story of daily life on a ship with a band of pirates who saved the ocean and inspired a generation. Norway are willing to use whatever means we need to uh, take your ship. You know, so if I'm going to lose my ship, you know, I'd rather sink it than turn it over to you. It may not be legal, but it's right. Can't think of a better job. Confessions of an eco-terrorist.